trackball mounts in it rather than a standard toggle on and off switch so your effect level is variable rather than just on and off so I'll just play a little bit. <laughs> So the original idea was that you could have this variable of this effect system where rather than just pushing your uh, button and turning your distortion on or your distortion off, you could have this mouse and the speed of the ball, depending on the direction in which you spun it, would affect the effect you had. So um, basically the idea was that we would program one effect into the y-axis and one effect into the x-axis, and then when the ball was still there would be no effect, the signal would be dry. And then if you were to kick the ball vertical or horizontal, you get a level of the effect program there based on the speed of the ball. So then you could kick it diagonally and then you would get a ratio of the two effects mixed based on the angle at which you spun. So the first problem was getting mouse input and PD, um, not so hard. But the quickest thing we found is that uh, the easiest thing to achieve is like deltas and also the position on the screen. And if you got into a corner or something like that, because we are running it in a visual environment, you, could, you would just wind up stuck in the corner and you wouldn't be able to kick in one direction. So we were able to get the acceleration out of it instead, which is what we wanted. And then, um, I guess right after that, we went to creating the patches. Yeah. Um, so basically, the cool thing about this is that um, what, what effects this does relies like, fully on, on what patches you're using. So basically, we have a toggle here that works. But we actually haven't made that many, that many patches for it yet. But basically, you can change through and you can make a patch that works um, with you know, these four directions. Positive X, negative X, positive Y, and negative Y. Um, and so basically, we have a, what we call a leaky bucket. Which basically, so it'll, it adds up as, at the velocities or the accelerations as you're going. And then, so you see it adds it on and then it slowly fades it out as well. Um, and so basically... One another problem we had was dynamically open opening up these patches as you toggle, um, and then closing all the old ones so that you know it does not taking up much processor power and you only have one patch open at a time. So that was definitely a difficulty we had. Um, so then the final design, you basically have uh, three knobs on this guy. Two of them each control one of the effects for a default level. So when the ball Say you have delay in the X direction, but you want there to be a level three delay all the time, you could set that knob so that when the ball goes down to being still, it's not a dry signal, you still have a default setting. And then a middle <coughs> knob controls total volume. Then you'd have two toggle buttons that are just momentary switches that'll toggle you through settings. A bypass button, as well as a kind of an auxiliary instantaneous effect that would be designed with each program. So rather than this ongoing delay or distortion, there would be one bang that would cause something crazy to happen. Right now we have all the code up on GitHub, um, but the product is far from complete. We intend to keep iterating on it and create an instructable and or market it next quarter. So we will um, keep people updated on that um, and that there's definitely more to come. I guess I'll play a little more. <laughs>